Good morning, YouTube! Today we have exciting news coming at you from the 2A community from Holosun, offering their latest innovation in thermal technology. This bad man, a JAMA, is capable of being both a red dot and a thermal zite. Boy, howdy, is it confused like the teens of America today. But that does not mean that you yourself have to be confused, as Mike Mayfield will be explaining to you how this thing works and if it is worth your cold, hard cash. Buckle up as we get into a deep dive into this exciting innovation from Holosun Technologies. Once known for bat soup, China is now known for hybrid red dot thermals that are going to take the market by storm. So without further ado, folks, Let's get into the news! Welcome to the new Micah Mayfield YouTube studio. Uh, I put a lot of work into this. Cameraman Dan actually helped me put in uh, work into this, and he doesn't get the recognition he deserves, right, Cameraman Dan? Yeah, whatever. Speaking of this new studio, the studios like this are expensive, but we could do something like this for your viewing experience thanks to our sponsors. Sponsors like Optics Planet, who are providing you with the coupon code MICA7 if you want to go get yourself uh, one of these bad Larrys yourself. And other bad Larrys, if you wanna go get one of these pups yourself, then you hit up Shooting Surplus and you also use the coupon code MICA7. Both those guys, uh, if I were in a room with them, I would uh, the third sponsor for this video, Americana Pipe Dream Apparel, Mill Surp, Knives, Flectarn, Omani DPM, all your good stuff, and 100 Concepts. Guys, this scope caps if you're into them. Uh, I actually highly recommend checking them out. The kill flash on these are amazing. Scope caps, uh, you don't break them. Bungie, anyway, love those guys. Best products in the biz. Ammo, all the ammo in today's video was provided by Last Shot, coupon code PLUG. Um, I'm going to break this video up into parts. If uh, there's so much information that's gonna be here, if you need to find the information you specifically care about, look in the timeline below to find which chapter that you're specifically looking for. We're gonna break it down into how to use it, pros, cons, and comparison between the optics we have here. Uh, I was very lucky to be one of the few people to get an early sample of one of these new, highly anticipated, I mean, this thing was probably one of the most talked about items at SHOT Show, without a doubt. I have the Hollow Sun. DRS NV, that is the night vision optic. This one retails for $999. You heard that right. You can see in the dark for $999. And then we have the Hollow Sun, probably the most anticipated one that anybody is here for. The Hollow Sun DRS TH. Okay, this that NV stands for night vision, TH stands for thermal. Alas, I could have had a video on these things done a long time ago. But on this channel, I'll never do something that I really don't know anything about. So what did I do? I went out and killed a whole bunch of pigs uh, and hunted out of a helicopter and went coyote hunting, rat hunting, varmint hunting, and other hunting with the night vision optic with the IRA Rico Alpha, a dedicated thermal, the AGM Sting IR clip-on, and lastly, the DRS TH, okay? So the only one here that's not a thermal is the DRS NV, so we'll kind of save that segment for the end. But the three main focuses of today will be dedicated versus clip-on versus its own class of optic, the Holosun DRSTH. I was relatively new to the thermal space. That is why I went ahead and really, I mean, I went all the way down to Texas and went hog hunting. I went all the way out into the hills of Idaho. I used all three systems extensively. I could have been the first person on YouTube if I wanted to, to just pop out a video on this, but I didn't want to do it. I wanted to get 
a real opinion on whether or not this guy was worth it, okay? Um, now, we're gonna work our way up. So we're gonna go ahead and talk about a six, this is $1,600, $4,500, and lastly, $7,000. At the very, very far end of the spectrum, we have a $1,000. Right off the rip, when I turned this thing on, I didn't really know exactly what I thought of it. Uh, like I said, it was one of my first thermal experiences and the manual was extremely, extremely overwhelming. When you do get your Hall of Sun Thermal, open the manual, read it front to back. You still won't understand how to use your optic. So go out, start clicking the buttons and do all that kind of stuff. So let me just go over a brief summary of actually how to use this optic. Okay guys, we are now punched in on the optic and we are going to explain how to use it. Um, while doing so, I will also overlay what's happening on the screen as I'm clicking the buttons. So to turn your optic on, we're gonna go ahead and start by just using it as a red dot. We're gonna hold the plus button on this side and boom, we now have a red dot reticle turned on. Cool, now we're going to flip the front cap up and tap the power button right here. And we get a Holosun logo and boom. We now have our thermal optic turned on as well as our red dot. Switching over to a little bit more of the intricate controls, I think Holosun did a pretty good job of making this user friendly. If this is gonna be your first user experience, this video might actually get you understanding the optic a little quicker than the instructions. At least me messing around with the optic did. Uh, I'm not much of a reader myself. So we have five buttons on the back of the optic. We have a magnification glass icon, we have a brightness icon, an okay button, an up arrow, and a down arrow. Okay. Now, Holosun has done a really good job of making all the controls kind of the same, where uh, you can tap or you can hold each one of those buttons and it will do a different function each time. So if I tap the magnifying glass, I will go from 1x, tap, now I should be at 3x. I will tap again and I should now be at 5x. Another tap will return us back to 1x magnification. Holding the magnification button, you'll hear a little click. And what that's going to do is going to refresh that sensor, okay? We'll get into thermal refresh rates and, and, and delay and latency, all that later. Then we have the brightness button. You can tap the brightness, boom. And now it's so dim I cannot see the screen. We'll tap it again. Brightness two, three, four, five, and six. We have six brightness settings. You'll see a little OLED icon in the bottom right. So again, tapping that brightness button adjusts your brightness pretty easy holding the brightness button cool so we are now in highlight mode holding it again we are now in outline mode holding it again we are now in white hot also my preferred method of running the optic moving over to the middle uh, okay button we can click okay and that will bring up our menu we have image, calibration, and set. Now what I think most of you will be using is the calibration menu. You'll go click the down button, click OK, and then click reticle. Now, what you're gonna do in this screen is you'll have an X and a Y as you'll see on the screen right here. You will then use the up arrow. I'll click it right now. And you can see the value is changing and then I can click. Now the, the goal here is that you will already have maybe zero the red dot and you can kind of slave that reticle over to the red dot so your zeros match up between the thermal reticle and the red dot. I would confirm zero independently just to make sure that everything's good to go. But to move over to the other axis, the uh, you simply tap the OK button again and now you can use these up and down arrows to move that reticle whichever direction you need. Now to get out of the menus, you long press the OK button, and now we're back on the reticle screen. Long press it again, we're back on that main menu, long press it again, and we are now out of the menus entirely. So for the menus, a recap, OK is to move forward by simply tapping it. To move backwards, you hold 
Okay, moving over to the last two buttons. It is an up arrow and a down arrow. And just like the theme with the rest of the buttons, there is a single tap as well as a press and hold feature for both of them. We'll start with the up arrow. With the up arrow, you can press it once and you'll notice the blue light will light up right there. And we just snapped a photo. Now with the up arrow, we can long press it. Boom, that blue light is now activated again and we are now recording. So tapping once, picture. Pressing and holding, you are now recording. Uh, these do record to a 32 gigabyte internal storage that you can transfer your computer with the supplied USB cable. Now, moving on to the last button, we have the down arrow. If I press the down arrow once, it will turn on the thermal reticle. That is a reticle independent of the actual red dot. Now, you'll notice pressing that button, you have three settings. You can press down three different times for three different uh, brightnesses of that reticle. To change the reticle, you simply hold the down arrow. Holding the down arrow again, we get to that third reticle. And we're back to the default reticle. Uh, typically, I kind of just have it off. Uh, so press it again, and it will disappear. That's kind of, so that's kind of the beginner's crash course on how to use the hollow sun thermal. Uh, the last segment of how to use your hollow sun thermal would be uh, how to install your batteries. You simply twist this. Boom, and you have your rechargeable batteries that it comes with. Mine came with four of the batteries and they last a long time. Uh, we'll, we'll delve into that when we start getting into the pros and cons. Boom, nice and easy to install batteries. Without further ado, let's move on to the next chapter in this video. Now, we are going to move on to the pros and cons of the Hollow Sun Thermal. The pros of the Hollow Sun Thermal over, per se, any of the rifles that we have on the table. You do not have to dedicate a rifle to be a thermal gun. You can have a red dot and simply pop your cap down and now I can see just my red dot reticle. And then when it's nighttime, you can flip this up, which is when you'll start using the thermal lens. You don't need to take light in there. And you can still use that red dot that you had zeroed earlier as your zero. I think that's the most convenient thing of this whole system. Uh, I put down a whole bunch of pigs. I didn't record all of them. I actually recorded one, but uh, I wasn't missing. It, it's per, it, it's dead on. Uh, it, it, it works extremely well. I think another pro of this thermal optic is it is significantly easier to learn how to operate and understand what the settings are over, say, one of these IRA Rico Alphas or even one of these AGM Sting IRs. It is actually, um, this was my first thermal optic that I actually really had experience with. And I pretty easily started to figure out how to zero in, what modes did what, the brightness settings had recorded. It, it was a pretty user-friendly experience. I think the guys over at Hollow Sun understood their customer base really well. And I have to give them hats off on how easy this thing was to learn. The manual was made it sound more difficult than it really was. I think another pro of this thing, and maybe the biggest pro of all, is simply the cost of this unit. $1,600 is insane to not have a dedicated thermal setup. This is also not a dedicated thermal setup, and this is $4,500 plus the cost of the EOTech Voodoo and mount, you're almost near that $6,000 range uh, to achieve a non-dedicated thermal setup. Uh, another pro of this optic that uh, I think is worth noting is the internal recording storage. Felt like it never ran out. 32 gigabytes of storage. I, I kept start and stopping uh, when I was in Texas recording, but then I started to realize, wait a minute, I still have 99% of my storage available and I've recorded like 20 clips already. So then I just let it run for minutes and minutes and minutes. Like I have probably have over an hour's worth of footage in here. I've only used a uh, 7% of the internal storage. So you don't have to use an SD card or anything like that to transfer the footage to the, to the uh, computer. You simply pop the 
thing right here and use the included cable once again. I don't know how they fit all that into a super small thermal. We have the list of pros out of the way. Let's go to the list of cons. Guys, I am beyond stoked to talk about a new sponsor for this channel, that is Zydax Computers. Now, the reason I am so excited to talk about Zydax Computers is because I have actually been editing on Zydax Computers for four years. Uh, whenever I've been, like legitimately, as soon as I got on with Grantham, the first computer that I got was a Zydax computer. Um, even when I have issues that I think is Zydax's fault and it ends up just being me doing something dumb, they've always been there to, to help me fix it. Um, and their computers have always had my back through countless hours of editing. So it is a product that I can trust, that I can tell you, you should trust. And they're a company that I think you should absolutely give your business to. They are strong advocates of the Second Amendment. Big gun guys can't appreciate that enough in today's society. So guys, I'll have a coupon code and a link in my description where you can check out Zydax PCs because those dudes are mega based and so are their computers. Getting into the cons, I want you to realize cons are kind of relative to price, okay? So just because something on this table might be better or worse, it doesn't mean it's better or worse for the money. So keep that in mind. Now, when talking about the cons, the first thing I'm going to start with is one of the biggest things people look for in a thermal. I don't know if I'd say the biggest, but one of the biggest. And that is the core resolution. Then we can come over to the dedicated thermal from iRay, the Rico Alpha, and we have a 640 by 512. Okay, that is more than double the resolution coming out of this thermal core. What I find to be the most impressive is we have a 640 by 512 pumping out of this clip-on, okay? This tiny little unit also for fourth, for $4,500, even less than the Ricoh Alpha, that all you simply do is swing in front of your optic, also has a 640 by 512 core. Now, that being said, neither of these two optics possess a red dot and a zeroing mechanism and, and a, it's a hybrid sight and all that kind of stuff. So it's understandable how Holosun had to jam pack all that tech into one unit, why it has a 256 core. We'll get into my opinions on that when we actually talk about the application side when I was hunting and all that and the comparisons. Um, for me, I was able to kill pigs and other things with this just fine. So, you know, it does punch down from dedicated and clip-on thermos. And moving on to the I'm gonna say the last con, because it's the only la it's the last con I can think of. I'm sure others will find more, but we're gonna talk about the identification range. Yes, I should have put this in the pros, but the detection range. So uh, I feel like once this thing was announced like a year ago at SHOT Show, uh, the big myth was, well, you know, since it's a red dot, the identification range is like 60 to 100 yards. So it's as good as useless, right? You, you're really not gonna be uh, seeing much through it. Well, when I went out there, uh, Angel from Sandy Creek Outfitters had been hopping out of the uh, the buggy, gets out, his optic, the Envision Halo or the Envision, Envision something, uh, sorry Angel, but uh, he'd hop out, his had a rangefinder on it, he was like, those are pigs, 1200 yards. Now, A, he's a master of his craft, so he's used to knowing what's what that far out, but B, you know, I, I looked through his optic, I could kind of tell they were pigs if I knew what I was doing more. Then you could either say this is impressive or not impressive. When I took the Hollow Sun Thermal, I humored myself and I went, all right, I'm gonna look into that field. And by golly, I could see heat signatures out to that 1200 yard mark, okay? Now, to me, this was mind blowing considering all the rumors from SHOT Show and the internet and all that were saying, you know, the detection range, there's a difference between identification and detection. ID, you know what it is. Detection, you see a heat signature and that's all you know. Now, when I saw those little white dots on that sensor, I was blown away. If you did have this idea in your head that you will only be able to see something and this sensor turns black and, and falls off after 100 yards, incorrect. You will be able to see heat signatures very far. Now here's the con. Will you be able to identify through this 256 by 192 sensor 
what you're looking at at that range? Absolutely not. Uh, even when you start dialing in the magnification to, to three and, and, and so forth, it, it's still a blurry mess. You will not be able to be like, that is a pig at 1200 yards. You will be able to say that is a heat signature at 1200 yards and decide if you want to pursue it or not. Where I got impressed is most pigs in Texas, you're shooting 100 yards and in. I'm going to show you a pig at 50 yards on the screen right now. I'm also going to end this pig's life. <laughs> so as we're watching this clip, I do want to note that the plus on the center of this clip is actually not my zero. I was using the red dot as my zero. And so you may look like I'm missing and you do see a couple misses. I probably should have settled down on the trigger there. Um, but the pig does cease to exist in this planet. Thank you to my hollow sun thermal. So I don't know if the internal recording is gonna look the same, but as you can see, Charles is completely, there we go, outlined. Charlie, go ahead and jump so I can show latency. So you can see that ghosting, do it again. Jump really fast. So you see how the outline doesn't quite catch up with the jumping. Uh, I think this is something that all thermals kind of deal with. This is a little slower than, than other higher end ones. Jump as high as you can. <laughs> At the far end of the spectrum here, we have the iRay Rico Alpha. This is a 3X dedicated thermal. This does not work as a as an optic uh, red dot or anything. It only works as a thermal. Now, this is where you're gonna start to see a little bit of a, a gap between thermal technology. So I'm gonna hold the record button and boom. We are now recording. So <laughs> you can kind of already see, let me see if I can focus this a little better. Oh man, yeah. The, just the sharpness and definition. Uh, I don't know if it's super fair to compare a $1,600 thermal versus a like seven or $6,000 thermal, but we're doing it just to show you those tiers. Um, there's positives and negatives to running that hollow sun. The hollow sun can be used and it, you don't have to have a dedicated rifle to the thermal. With this alpha, the IRA alpha, you have to dedicate this rifle. I guess you, some argue you could put an offset red dot, but it's not quite as convenient as the hollow sun. Dude, you are looking stacked. Do me a favor, ready? Jump. Jump. There's not a whole lot difference between latency and the hollow sun and this. It might even be the same. To be completely honest, for how small of a package that is, the latency is incredible. Uh, I fully expected this to look a lot better, but dude, it had just the same amount of lag. You looked you looked a little stronger with this one, so we'll say this one wins. Uh, let me switch modes real quick. So now we're in black hot. And you can see Charlie just looks like a, uh, a black figure. Um, <laughs> Now Charlie just is basically a black outline uh, as if he were, you know, standing in front of the sun. And we're gonna go to the other mode. Boom, red hot. You can see his skin lighting up and color. So this is highlight mode and white hot. So white hot once again is my preferred uh, thing of running this. The other modes, so-so. Uh, that being said, it is nice this does come with those other modes. You do not get all that jam packed into that tiny little package. <laughs> all right, so now we have our lower dropped and bolt open again. And we have the AGM Sting IR. So this kind of is the in-between uh, of the three setups that we have, okay? With the Hollow Sun, you have a non-dedicated rifle. You can have a thermal or a red dot. Same here, you kind of have a LPVO or EOTech, whatever, but you don't have to dedicate your entire rifle to it. You can simply take your unit, swing it in front, look through here, and as long as you've zeroed your image on this, you can continue to use 
the reticle that you've already zeroed as your, your main zero. Um, so we're gonna try our absolute best to get a recording. There we go. So Dan, would you go ahead and turn on the EOTech? It's that top button. So boom. Uh, so there it is, there's Charles. And then Dan, go ahead and flick that thermal in front. Boom. Now you have a thermal in front of your LPVO. So there is a winner. The winner would be the IRA Rico Alpha as far as clarity, as far as you know, magnification, detection, features, functions, all that kind of stuff. The battery life is incredible. It, it wins, it does win. That being said, it doesn't win for everybody. If you don't wanna dedicate an entire rifle to your thermal, cause that is just another expense that you have to tack on, then this is for you. This doesn't lose by a whole lot. This AGM Sting IR is a very, very impressive unit. It actually kind of blew my mind. It, it probably is a setup that I'll be using relatively often. Um, this rifle really impressed me. This unit really impressed me. Now, one thing I haven't talked about is AGM, when I told them I was gonna be doing this video, if I could use their product, uh, I didn't actually ask for this, but this is their uh, Sidewinder. So whenever there was AGM footage, it was actually filmed through the Sidewinder, which I hopefully, hopefully wasn't misleading about the, uh, the Sting. It's just, I didn't really think that I wanted this or had a use case for this, but now that I am actively hunting out here, all my boys are going out, everybody's like, yo, bring the monocular, bring the monocular. I actually highly recommend, I mean, this is like sub two grand. Um, if you want to really spot something at night, I'm telling you right now, getting out there and only using this and just scanning and scanning and scanning and scanning, holding that rifle gets very tiring. I almost recommend running, you know, a setup. If you're gonna, if you are under budget constraints and you wanna run the Holosun DRSTH, you're not making a bad choice at all. You're going to be able to uh, shoot and kill things at night. But unexpectedly enough, yeah, no, this is actually coming out with me like every single time I hunt now, just being able to go like this, not wear yourself out. It comes with a base 2X zoom. Um, it's inexpensive and you will absolutely be able to find whatever you're trying to look for at night. For $1,600 and not running a dedicated rifle to your thermal at all, this is a great option. I'm gonna be honest. So obviously there's better thermal offerings on the market. Whoa, shocker, you know, like triple the price gets you a, a better product. Um, but what this allows uh, the everyday man, the working man who doesn't want, he wants to buy one rifle because he worked hard for that cash. He wants to buy one optic, have a thermal. He worked hard for that cash and he doesn't want to be, you know, building an entire rifle and then slapping seven grand on it. This makes a ton of sense. You're going to accomplish what you need to accomplish with this. If you're a rancher and you're dealing with hog problems, you're going to kill those hogs without a doubt. You're going to be putting them down. You're going to be spotting them and seeing them. And especially if you start pairing it with a cheap monocular that maybe has a little bit higher of a sensor, you can really identify and find, boom, you're still less money than any of these setups, okay? Like this is like the dream combo as far as affordability, in my opinion, um, for uh, hunting and all that kind of stuff. Uh, now, if we wanna start talking about combat, stuff like that, look, I've never been in combat. I probably can't speak on that. I have LARP fantasies that I could talk about that I think would be really cool situations, but <laughs> they're just not realistic. So, um, guys, at the end of the day, the Holosun DRSTH, I think at, coming in at $1,600 is a buy. For those of you, you know, are bougie and you want a little bit nicer of things, um, you know, that, that higher end product, these exist. These are available for you to purchase, okay? But I really appreciate the fact that Holosun is coming in with a thermal offering, a red dot offering at $1,600 that works, okay? It's packed with features, it's easy to use, it has a great battery life. Um, I don't have a whole lot of bad things to say about it. That being said, there are things to harp on, and I know people are gonna harp on this because these are better. There are better offerings out there. I'm not saying this is the best thermal on the market. I am saying for the money, what you get, I think is very worth it. That's the bottom line. Now, closing out, we're done talking about thermals. If you guys were interested in the setups that I was running for these, I'll just give you guys a quick shout out to, to, to whatever's on all these guns, okay? 
So we have the Daniel Defense Wrist 3 Upper. Picked that guy up from Optics Planet. Um, obviously the Holosun Thermal Peck, uh, whatever Peck, I don't know. And lastly, this is actually a, uh, a really neat little guy right here. This is from a company called AB Suppressors. I almost didn't take them seriously at first because of how goofy those ribs looked. But then I started thinking, man, <laughs> I really need that rib suppressor, uh, if you know what I'm saying. But uh, then it showed up covered in this like bed liner stuff. And so now I can't shove it up. My All jokes aside, it is a goofy looking can, but it actually like exceeded my expectations, especially for how light and small it is last night. I mean, it had like almost no flash signature coming out of that thing. And then I got the Otter Creek Labs little twisty adapter so you can screw that into the AB, put it on a Surefire muzzle device, kind of lock it in and boom, good to go. Um, then we have the AGM Sting IR, Liberty Precision. This is the Torch, also probably one of my favorite suppressors I currently have. As far as 5.56 cans go, highly recommend checking out Liberty Precision. And then lastly, this is just kind of a hodgepodge build, you know, random parts. It's 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 just thrown together. This right here is a Ripcord Industries uh, uh, rifle. So uh, awesome rails. You guys saw this one in the scope switch video. And I'm running an IR light on this guy. It's IR only uh, because it's kind of my dedicated coyote gun. I don't really, I'm not really using this for anything else. That's why I have the dedicated thermal, the IR light. And then I'm actually using a wit machine and tool suppressor. I think you can get these wit machine cans for legitimately under $500 with the tax stamp. So they're like absurdly cheap. I know they're really durable. Um, uh, kind of just tank suppressors and, and oddly affordable. Obviously, you're going to get better performance out of these guys, but that is what I was running. I love that tan look with the tan rifle. Guys, thank you so much for watching and, and tuning in this far. If you did watch the whole video, God bless your soul. I'm sorry that it was, it was so long. Um, there was a lot of information. I probably will get back to that, that more lighthearted content after this. Um, this one really took a lot out of me. Um, Time-wise, I mean, you notice the uploads kind of kind of stopped. This was a behemoth of a project. I didn't want to give you guys really bad info. Um, I really wanted to use it, and I uh, really wanted to get some use case on on this, but not just this, but other things. And man, I did not realize what kind of a task that was going to be that I undertook. Um, thank you for watching. Please subscribe. It helps me out a ton. And as always, guys, I have plenty of great things coming for you now that this is over. Hopefully we can get back to some regularly scheduled uploads. And uh, we also stream on Fridays at, um, what time do we stream? Seven. We stream at seven mountain time. That's 6 p.m. PST. So check out Twitch. Love you guys. Talk to you later. All right, wrapping up, I know you guys are probably like, dude, you said you were going to totally talk about the night vision optic. I said I was going to save it for the end, and that I am. Now, the reason I'm saving this for the end is, A, it's not a thermal optic, and B, I'm just going to say it, as an owner of night vision, I don't have a lot of use case for this. Um, nah. This one's going to be a weird one to talk about, so... Um, Let's just kind of dive straight into it. Getting into the Holosun night vision optic, this thing is only $9.99. It's by far the cheapest out of any of these optics we've talked about today, okay? And I mean, you already get about $400, $350 of the way there by just owning the red dot. So adding the capability to see in the dark on top of that is probably also worth it. That being said, personally, man, I don't know the exact use case for the night vision optic. Um, is law enforcement going to use this, this tiny little night vision window? No, they're going to put on night vision. And this isn't necessarily night vision. It's kind of digital night vision. That being said, it does let you see in the dark. I'll, I'll say this. Having this optic is better than not having any ability to see in the dark. Uh, listening to those guys from the Ukraine talk on Grantham's channel about how Russians would hold hands and walk through the forest because one dude, you know, had a single uh, night vision unit. Obviously, this would serve them a lot better than not having anything at all. That being said, 
I'm struggling to find a, a severely good use case for the night vision optic. I think uh, personally, I'd rather save up an additional thousand bones or whatever for a PBS 14 Gen Gen 2 or, or contract tube or something like that. Um, I don't think it's utterly useless. I do think, you know, seeing in the dark and having it weapon mounted and all that for 99 is about right uh, as far as price goes. It's just personally, I don't have a lot of use case for it. Uh, and I'll also just leave you with this, and this might sound like a cop-out, but I would go watch Dirty Civilians video where they talk about this night vision unit a little bit more than I will in this video. I don't think it's a bad purchase. I also don't think it's a purchase you need to make. Uh, I, I don't want that to sound harsh. I'm just struggling to find what the actual use case of this night vision optic is, other than obviously seeing in the dark. But that's about all I'll leave you with. Uh, I'm not going to go too far into it. I'm sorry if I disappointed you by, by not going into a full-on review of the night vision optic. I'll also be completely honest with you guys and say I didn't really use this one more than like twice. Um, once I realized how much more effective the, uh, the thermal is, wherever that is, I kind of put this one on the shelf. I, I think of the two, I'd save the additional money and I would buy the thermal optic and not and not this one. Um, that being said, there are benefits to the night vision optic, such as target identification. With a thermal optic, um, let's say there's two people. One of them is a good guy. One of them is a bad guy, and they're standing right next to each other looking at you. Um, and the quiz of the day is to tell, hey, is that the good guy or is that the bad guy? You know, through a thermal optic, you're not going to be able to be like, that's the bad guy, that's the good guy. You'll just be able to be like, those are white figures uh, displayed through my thermal optic. Now, with night vision, you'll actually get some detail, you know, recognition, all that kind of stuff. So you'll actually be able to identify what you're looking at. So there are some benefits to owning the night vision. But personally, um, you know, like I said, would never lie to you guys. I didn't use it enough to give you guys a real opinion. I don't have a great use case for it because I do own night vision. Um, anyway, closing out.